it's Miranda from Spring Branch Memorial Library and welcome to the first ever Young Artist Workshop where together you and I will learn about famous artists and create crafts that mirror their work. So for this first week we're going to be learning about Georges Seurat. Georges Seurat was born 162 years ago in 1859 in Paris, France. He studied art in school and after a year in the military became an artist full-time. His most famous work is a Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grande Jatte. This work features a colorful crowd soaking up the sun in the park. At 7 by 10 feet, this painting is huge! It was created using pointillism, a style that Seurat and his friend Paul Signac made famous. What is pointillism, you ask? It is a painting style that uses tons of tiny dots right up beside each other. Seurat's paintings are similar to the dots on a TV or computer screen where many pixels come together to create a picture. The easiest way to remember Surat is through the saying, Surat to dots. Repeat this catchy phrase a few times fast. Surat to dots, Surat to dots, Surat to dots. Are you ready to make some dots of your own? I'm going to show you some of the different ways that you can create dots like Surat. Let's start with watercolors. I used Crayola washable watercolors. and Q-tips to create this elephant. So, here is my blank elephant. You can use any coloring page that you like to create this project, or you can follow the link included below to find this exact one. We will also have some of these printed out at the library for you that you can come and pick up at the front desk. You're going to need a cup of water, okay, so what I did was I took my Q-tip and I dipped it in the water so that it was wet but not dripping but it needs to be good and wet. And then I picked the color that I liked, so I'm going to start with purple. And I swirled it. In the watercolor, so it's nice and purple. And I started creating dots. So this is really cool in that you can create dark dots or light dots. If you want really dark dots, you're going to put a lot of paint on your Q-tip. But if you want super light and summery dots, then you're only going to use a little bit. Also, the more pressure you use, the darker your dots. And here are some nice purple dots. So, the closer they are together, the darker your color. So you can put your dots super close together to have really intense pigment, or you can space them out and do as many dots as you like. What looks really cool is when you use two colors that go together right next to each other. So I'm going to use blue with my purple. I'm going to put less paint on the brush so that you can see how to create a lighter dot. And I'm going to cluster them right next to each other. So that they kind of fade into one another. You can even overlap to create a blue-purple, a nice gradient. Here's a light dot, and here's a dark dot where I press down really hard. It's a bit darker. Something really cool that you can do is create a lot of deep clusters near the feet or the bottom of your elephant to create depth so that he looks 3D. You 
And you just want nice round dots. So here's one way you can create your elephant. All right, so that's watercolors. You can use anything that you have around the house. It doesn't have to be fancy paint like Surratt. You can use crayons. I'm not going to use purple this time. I'm going to use green. And you're going to just create circles. Until they cluster up together. Those are really soft circles. If I want darker ones, I'm going to bear down harder. You can use colored pencils. mix the colors up for fun. Anything that creates little dots, anything you have around the house. You can also create big dots using things like quick stick. Or Do a dot art. I can show you what a quick stick looks like. Okay. So this is just paint. And it makes a big circle when you twist it a little bit. If you're creating tiny circles, it does take a very long time. My favorite method to create Surratt's dots is markers. And it creates something like this. Lots and lots of tiny dots. And I can show you how to do this as well. Okay, so here is our elephant. To make it a little bit easier, I broke it up using the colors that I knew I wanted to use for my elephant so that I had an idea as to where one color would stop and the next one would start. So I just used regular markers. And I knew I wanted my purple to stop about here. So I made a little trail of dots. And I wanted to follow that with blue. Whatever method you choose, it's a good idea to make a little grid so that you know where you want to stop. If you want to create a gradient like I did. If not, you can just put random colors everywhere and have fun. Make it anything you want it to be. green dots. Okay. Just gonna 
I had an idea as to what I was going to do. Okay, let's go back to purple. So you can start anywhere you like. I'm going to start near the bottom because it's my favorite part. And I'm just going to create tiny dots that are clustered together. And they don't have to be perfect. If some of them look like lines or some of them are faint, that's okay. Because when you have tons of them, it really doesn't show up. And also, art is not perfect anyway. Perfect is boring. Close to the feet, I like to put a ton of dots really close together so that his feet look three-dimensional. as many as I can get. And that's how I made these tiny dots. You can also use markers to make giant dots. They don't have to be tiny. You can make big circles like this. Because those are cool too when they overlap. completely up to you. If you want to get really messy, you can take the tips of your fingers and dip them in paint. You can dip them in stamp ink anything you can think of to create dots. If you're feeling very adventurous, you can forego the coloring sheet altogether. You don't have to use a coloring sheet. And you can just make your own picture. So I have some blank paper here. You can draw it out before and then fill it with dots. Or you can just create it with dots to begin with. Markers are fun. Let's use a different color. I'm going to use red. And I'm going to make a heart. I'm just going to make a big outline and fill it in later. So there's my outline, and then I would go in make tons and tons of little dots. And fill it up with dots as well. And that's how that works. You can use more than one color. Ooh, this pink and red are very similar to one another. But it does give it a little bit of depth because the pink is darker than the red, so that's neat. You just keep going and keep going until you have tons and tons of clustered dots. And this works with anything. Let's go back to our watercolor. cup of water, my q-tip, okay. I'm 
going to use a nice green. And, hmm, I'm going to create a caterpillar. These are really light dots. I outlined my shape a little bit, and then I filled it in. This is by far the easiest way to create dots. There's my caterpillar. Let's give him a face with a marker, some cool little features, some little legs, you can do some little decorations too, and split up this little segment, that's fun. And there's my caterpillar. You can use anything at all to create dots like Surat. And there we are. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and learning how to make dots like Syrah. I would love for you to come by the library and show us the fabulous artwork that you've made, or you can send it to us on Facebook or Instagram. Tag us, we always love that. I would like to let you know about some of our other upcoming programs. We have a puppet show next Wednesday, a virtual puppet show. We'll be having one of those a month. And the last week of the month, we'll be having a band books readout. So you may want to join us for that. Come hang out with us again soon. Thank you so much for coming. And I look forward to lots of fun programming in the future here at Spring Branch Memorial Library. Bye.